Well, Harvest Fest is ruined. Thanks a lot, Clint. Just kidding. This is all Bag of Bones Alexis's fault. And my. Did she leave her mess behind for her family to clean up? Shanna is so goddamn oblivious to everything that just happened. Girl, I think you're scaring Aurora. After icing his face, Chris decided to comfort crying Aurora, taking her outside to have a nap in his arms. And, as he looked down at his beautiful sleeping granddaughter, he couldn't help but wonder. Was he a monster? Clint was so severely hurt, and Chris wished he could take his pain away. He hoped that one day, he'd forgive him and they'll be able to reconcile, biological or not. Clint's still his son. Autumn knew that Harvest Fest was ruined, so she went upstairs to cry in bed, asking Shanna to leave her alone. Shanna didn't even know what happened between her and Clint. So, she made herself useful and tended to Autumn's garden that she'd barely touched since her mother Alexis's death. She was sure she'd appreciate it, and Shanna was also sure that she was scared for Autumn. Nothing has gone right for her lately. She's never seen her cry so much. Both Chris and Shanna came back inside the house to help the twins with tummy time, and shortly after was when Autumn woke up. Sitch, are you seriously talking to yourself in front of everyone? Sis is stressed. She didn't know what to think after what happened tonight. The thought of her dear mother slaughtering Clint's entire biological family sent chills down her spine. Was it true? And if it was, why the hell would Alexis do that? And was Christopher involved? Who even were her parents? She couldn't seem to figure it out as she cried in the shower. When she was done, she hurried back to her bedroom and sobbed on her wife's shoulder. Shanna was really concerned, asking what the hell happened tonight. She thought it was just some normal sibling rivalry, but no, it was a lot more than that. Alexis murdered Clint's biological family and kidnapped him. He wasn't found on the side of the road, and Chris knew about it this entire time. Shanna was beyond shocked. She felt nauseated. There's no way that's possible, right? But it was, because Chris admitted to the entire thing. Shanna tried to think rationally. She doesn't agree with murder, but perhaps there was a good reason why Alexis did what she did. Perhaps there's history that Alexis had with Clint's family that they didn't know about. Maybe Clint's family weren't good sims. Maybe they wanted to harm Alexis. Well, that could be true. The truth is that Autumn could never possibly know what Alexis's motives were and what happened between her and Clint's family. There's a possibility her dad didn't know either. Maybe she was thinking too deep into it and, for now, should leave it alone. And Shanna agreed. Her poor wife. She's been through enough suffering for 10 lifetimes. She wished she could ease her pain. Sometimes, Shanna contemplated giving Autumn a potion of emotional stability. But due to Autumn's past with addiction, she figured it probably wouldn't be a good idea. She was really going to have to watch her now to make sure everything was okay. She couldn't lose her wife. All while Red Pill was downstairs, losing her mind. But we'll get into that later. Autumn and Shanna ended up getting wicked, which made Shanna's blood pressure skyrocket. Dan, Sim you see so good, it's lethal. Why are you both casually walking around the house in towels? You'll have no shame. As she fed her daughter Wacy in her arms, Autumn looked into her pretty eyes and thought to herself. What would she do to protect her kid? She'd kill for Sage, Aurora, and Oasis, right? Maybe that was exactly what Alexis had to do when it came to Clint's family. Ugh. Why was she thinking about this again? She promised herself she wouldn't. But that's okay, because Shanna knew exactly something that would help Autumn get that off her mind. She was taking her and Sage to Evergreen Harbor to show them something. The two of them cleaned up together and Sage wrapped up his school prep before the three of them left for Shanna's hometown. And during a storm, smart move, Shanna girl, she told Autumn about the house for sale she saw after Alexis's funeral and wanted the three of them to take a visit inside. Right upon entering, Autumn was super impressed with the house. It was so new, had lots of windows to let the sunlight in, and the wood floors and neutral colors reminded her a lot of her Moonwood Mill home. It was spacious, but cozy, it was private, but not in the middle of nowhere. And it was quiet, with only the relaxing sounds of the waterfalls splashing outside. It had four bedrooms, three bathrooms, and something Autumn 
rooms never had before, a huge basement, it has a pool, plenty of space for gardening, a sunroom, and two patios, and it looks like Sage was enjoying the house and its surrounding areas, running outside to climb a tree, and failing at it immensely. Autumn was really in love with this house, and Shana was in love with the idea of living just a two-minute walk away from her brothers. She missed them so much, Autumn completely understood Shana's desire to live close to her brothers. Autumn's had trouble leaving her Moonwood Mill home behind because she also knew that she'd miss her family. But with pretty much every sibling moved out, she knew it was finally her turn to go, and that it was her turn to sacrifice something for Shana. They were putting an offer on this house, but on the bright side, Evergreen Harbor wasn't that far from Moonwood Mill, and just as the Kilohas were about to leave was right when Raggedy Volkov pulled up to her boyfriend Zayden Kibo's apartment. She couldn't give two fucks about Clint leaving. She'd been thinking non-stop about Zayden's terrible excuse for not showing up to her mother's funeral, and made a decision. It was time for the two of them to break up. She no longer cared that they were soulmates. She'd had it with him, and wasn't putting up with it any longer. But to her surprise, Zayden wasn't home. The only person here was his brother Dexter. Reindeer was confused. Where is Zayden? He works the graveyard shift. And that's when Dexter told her that he decided to pick up a double shift today. Great, just great. The one day she decides to dump him is the day he isn't here. Dexter kind of figured that was the reason why roast beef was here, her fight with Zayden. She apologized to Dexter about that. She shouldn't have made a scene in front of him and Voldemar. What happens between her and Zayden is their business, not Dexter's. But Dexter didn't mind, she could tell him all about it, if she wanted. And even though she felt like she shouldn't, Renegade went ahead and took up Dexter's offer. He's just so mean to her, he says he loves her, but his actions always prove otherwise. She's loved him and been loyal to him since she was a teenager, and this is what she gets in return. She called him all sorts of names, but then bit her tongue. She shouldn't be saying this about Zayden to his younger brother, but Dexter thought it was funny. He didn't know if Rogamuffin knew this or not, but him and Zayden have never really gotten along. He's always been an asshole, and not just to her, but a lot to him growing up. She could say whatever she wanted about him. The two of them were really bonding over their mutual hatred for Zayden. Retinoid Serum had always liked Dexter. He was chill and easy to talk to. Sometimes, she wished that instead of falling for Zayden, she would have fallen for his brother. He listened to her, he understood her, he made her laugh, and being with him would probably be stress-free or, at least, less stressful. She was convinced that nothing could be more stressful than being with Satan, and Dexter enjoyed being around rectal piercing. She was funny and smart and hot. She could do a lot better than his brother, and Rain Rain Go Away couldn't lie and say that Dexter calling her hot didn't make her tremble. She wanted to hear him say it again, and so, he did. Ever since the moment she walked through their door, he's always thought that she was the hottest sim he'd ever seen in his entire fucking life. Oh shit.